Hey everyone, it's Sharon from Cozy Junk Studio. We're gonna review a few of my favorite wood projects from last Christmas. I hope you guys are ready to get the Christmas season of DIY jump started, and this is gonna jump start mine. I will be doing new Christmas videos for this year and plan on doing some dark and moody Christmas. To support me until then, watch some of my Christmas videos and other videos. You guys know how much I appreciate you and thank you so much to all my subscribers that have been here from the beginning and all the new ones. Your comments mean so much to me. I just appreciate you very much. All right, let's get on into this video and see a few wood projects that are super easy and a lot of fun to make. Grab those wood blocks, any that you have. I'm gonna be using some old stamps that are not my style. I gained these through a collection and I'm just gonna be pulling off the rubber backing Dollar Tree now has wood blocks that you can use for this type of craft. Any scrap wood, grab it. We're gonna make some cute projects with these today. I grabbed a few that were similar in size and decided that I wanted to make some of these cool snowflake blocks. They can be a shelf sitter or sit in your wood trays uh, or on your wood shelves or on your fireplace. Anything like that would be great. I've gone ahead and given these stamps a coat of black paint. You can use any kind of paint for this. We're going to be using these stamps, again, that I have acquired in a collection. And because they had these beautiful large snowflakes, they're going to fit perfectly. Now I'm going to head and distressing and rounding off my edges a little bit more before I go ahead and stamp these. So like I said, I'm going to be using these uh, snowflake stamps. I think these are... Stamp. Oh, I can't remember the name. Some of them are Tim Holtz stamps. You don't have to use stamps. Obviously, you can hand paint snowflakes on here. You can decoupage snowflakes. Uh, the Dollar Tree has wood snowflakes. You could um, spray paint around them to get your outline trace around them. There's lots of different things you can use if you don't have stamps. Now, I'm just using some white chalk paint and rolling it on here and then putting the stamp on there. Once we finish stamping these, we are gonna go ahead and take a little bit of that paint and go around the edges, just to give it a little bit of a snowy look. And then we're gonna seal these in, I think with some Mod Podge. Once that Mod Podge dries, I'm gonna go ahead and use some DIY white wax to give these an even more snowy look. I'm gonna wax them all over. Once I get them waxed, I will wipe some of that back just to give it a more smooth look. You can you know, add as much of this as you want and you can wipe away as much as you want you know, it's still going to leave some behind. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about these and if these are really cute just to set on shelves or on your tiered trays. Let me know if this is a cute scrap wood project. We're going to be using this wood hoop. I thrifted this, but you can find these at the Dollar Tree now. Um, Walmart, very reasonable if you haven't uh, thrifted any. And we're going to go ahead and use this as a decor piece instead of to stabilize something for embroidery which is what it's made for. Now I'm going to be using some of this Dollar Tree scarf fabric. Because this fabric is so sheer I wanted to put something white or cream behind it so I just dug through my scraps. You can use anything any type of light colored material for this. This will not make it so sheer and where this fabric is quite stiff it will help the fabric stay in the hoop more stable and stiff than just flimsy. Now that I've got it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and cut the excess off before I um, glue it down. I'm going to go ahead and get all that excess cut off and then I'm just going to use hot glue and glue this onto the, the wood hoop itself. You can glue it to the fabric as well, but I didn't really want to get it quite too far down on the back of that fabric. But Again, this is going to be an or used as an ornament or a hanging decor, so no one's going to see the back of this. We are going to add some embellishments to this, but because the fabric is very busy itself, I just want to add some at the top of this uh, hoop, which is going to be my top. I'm not making the metal um, centerpiece the top. I'm just kind of switching it on its side, adding some greenery and some pine cones and some of those red um, berries that you can get most of this from the Dollar Tree. I did go ahead and add a piece of jute twine on the back of this so that I could hang this. 
you all have to let me know, have you tried something like this with a hoop, with one of these um, embroidery hoops? I know a lot of people use them in decor now. And let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. This next project is going to be using the wood blocks. And what we're going to be making here is some snowmen. I loved how these things turned out and they're so easy to make. And like I said, you can get the wood blocks at the Dollar Tree. I mean, it's definitely cheaper if you either get them for free like I did or you purchase a long piece of wood and have it cut at like your local hardware. That generally is cheaper than buying the blocks at Dollar Tree. They're just more convenient. They're already cut for you and simple to pick up. So what I did was use some of those larger uh, popsicle like sticks to make the brim of my hat. I just cut them easily with uh, shears and I, now I'm just um, sanding the edges for a smoother finish. Once I get these sanded I'm just going to give them a good coat of some white chalk paint. You can use any kind of white paint on this whatever you have on hand that's what I'm encouraging you to use. Let that dry, give it a couple good coats, let that dry, and then I do apologize, but I lost some footage from this. What I did here was I only painted half of my block um, white on the front, and then I went ahead and painted the just slanted section that I knew I wanted to use for my hat part. And, you know, I just eyeballed it. You can measure, mark off, do all that, but I eyeballed it. And then I painted my little wood sticks black because they're the brim of my hat, used hot glue and wood glue from the Dollar Tree to attach these little brims of their hats. I went ahead and finished off the backs and the sides because these are going to be cute little shelf sitters and I didn't know if they would be seen from the back, so I thought that I would go ahead and finish these off. You could even double these. You could have made, or I could have made little scarecrows on the back because the hat would have been perfect for a scarecrow. Or you can just double the snowman on the back as well, or a Santa. The possibilities are endless with us crafters because the ideas just flow out of my brain. If I had the time to make everything that I thought of, it would be like heaven. I thought that since I had this wood as the brim, I would go ahead and make the noses out of wood. Now you can paint your noses on or use anything really for noses. Uh, fabric, there's so much you could think of, but I just went ahead and used those same sticks and just cut some sideways triangles. And now I'm just mixing a couple different of my acrylic paints to make more of a carrot, dark carrot look for these. Painting them on and then using um, I think just the wood glue, maybe some hot glue to attach these. I'm taking some of this red ribbon to go on the tops of the brims of my hat or different ribbons. I found this measuring tape ribbon. Oh, this stuff is so cool. Anyways, and I am making all of their hats different. You can make them all alike. It, it really just depends what you're going for. I'm just using wood glue. You can use Fabri-Tac. You can use a lot of different glues. It'll dry fine with the fabric and give it more of a stiff kind of glazed appearance. Once I get my ribbons on, and then I'm gonna just do some embellishment like on a, on a snowman hat. Put some berries and some greenery, just make him look cute how I like. And I'm cutting all this into like miniature so that it'll fit really good on here. These are some Dollar Tree florals and you can just cut the leaves down so tiny to make them fit whatever it is you're working on. And I think they're co they're covered in that white snow and just makes it look so wintry. Now what is a snowman without a little bit of snow? We are adding some of that white paint just around the edges to make it look like he's got a little bit of snow on him. And then we're gonna add some glitter or some flake, metallic flakes. 
you can find this stuff at Dollar Tree. I've had this in my stash for a while. Um, it didn't come from Dollar Tree, but I know that they have the fake snow that looks metallic -y in the in the Christmas season. As a matter of fact, some of our Dollar Trees have Christmas out here because one of them said the store manager loves Christmas, so she put hers out early. I missed where I used some flat back plastic black looking stones to glue on as eyes, and now I'm just using a black Posca pen uh, to do the mouth and you can use just a sharpie marker. You don't have to have a paint pen Also, um, I'm using just some pink paint here to give them some cute little rosy cheeks And I do go back and dab that with a little bit of white chalk paint to make it look like their cheeks are frosted so these projects are some com compilations of Christmas videos that I did last year and it's really neat to watch the difference in my videos now than last year. This is how I first started out in November making Christmas videos. So these are some of my very first videos. I have noticed that my camera was very zoomed in, which is great when you're doing small projects, but it did cut out some of the stuff I was doing. Thank goodness I don't do that anymore. Um, but anyways, we learn and live as we get more experience. So I'm just using some Mod Podge to give this all a good seal in so that there won't be any issues with the paint coming off or the glitter coming off. That just seals that glitter in and it dries clear so you're not going to have to worry about that milky finish. We're going to go ahead and do another wood block video and I was just measuring these to make sure they were a good size for coasters. These are the same size and they're going to be perfect for coasters. That's what we're making. I was just showing you that I am using some of Tim Holtz Christmas wallpaper on these. These are so simple to make, you guys. Don't hesitate to make some for gifts. I enjoyed these so much. We used them last year in my home. In the I put them in my den so that we could set our drinks on. And they just were so festive and so easy. I'm just deciding what I want to put on these, and I end up going with that Merry and Bright wording. Those are also Tim Holtz, um, I think they're word cards. You can get, I will try to link some of these products in my description box below. I think you can still get some of them on Amazon, I'm not sure. I know he brings out a new Christmas line every year. This is just some black chalk paint. I'm going around the edges, so when I sand back, I want some of that black to show through. Now I'm using Fancy Farm Girl by DIY Clay Paint. I love this color. It is a great green for any season. I'm going to go ahead and paint just the edges because um, you're not going to see the back. We're going to add some cork to that and you're not going to see the front. We just want it on the sides where we're going to see the color that is not covered up. Once we get that painted, we're going to go ahead and use some Mod Podge to put our paper on. We're going to put our little card on as well um, with, I think, with Mod Podge or glue. And then we're going to seal it with Mod Podge. Now, you can use just Elmer's glue. I think it dries clear. You might want to do a spot check. I've never used Elmer's glue to use as Mod Podge um, or as a decoupage medium. But I'm pretty sure that a lot of people do. They also make clear Elmer's glue. Uh, but anyways, that's what we're doing here. And, that, and you can give these several coats of whatever your sealer is, just in case you're afraid that the water will um, mess or deactivate the clear coat. But I only gave mine, I think, one coat, maybe two, and we didn't have any issues with them getting wet or soggy. The Mod Podge held up very well. There's also dishwasher safe Mod Podge, which is meant for uh, getting wet so if you feel better using dishwasher safe Mod Podge on something like this go ahead and do that and then you would definitely not have to worry about any wet making your project soggy. To finish the back of these off I'm going to go ahead and use some of the Dollar Tree sticky sheets of cork. They do carry it you can get it in different places but this is from Dollar Tree and I just cut it the same shape as the back that way, if you sit these on furniture, they won't scratch them. They'll have a soft cushion on the bottom, and it just makes them look like a true coaster. And you all have to let me know, have you ever made coasters? And if you're going to try this, let me know in the comments below. I am really enjoying, like I said, seeing the projects I made last year. A lot of them are small. I was just starting out, and it really makes me want to make some more small projects, especially for ornaments and stuff, but we'll see. Speaking of ornaments, our next ornament is going to be, or our next, next project is going to be an ornament. 
Now I've already pre-drilled a hole in this wood slice. They sell these again at the Dollar Tree. I had mine from, I'm not sure. It was, I have several. It was from some project, but I'm just using some white chalk paint to paint a circle in the center and leaving some of that edge so you can see the wood and then of course the raw um, bark. This one is so easy, you all. I just took a letter from the IOD letterpress set or typesetting set and I'm using some gray, I think some gray Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to stamp a letter on there. Seal this and this piece is done. These are so easy and they make great gifts, personalized gifts. So don't hesitate to get some of those wood slices and make them as gifts um, to give especially at a holiday function or someone that maybe you don't really know what they like. An initial is great. You can use their last initial because it can be their family ornament for the tree. And I just put some of that glitter around the edge using that same Mod Podge. And this piece is finished. Here is the photo. I think this great, goes great with a lot of different styles of decor. This next project is again using wood and this one was so much fun. You can make so many of these. So I got these large um, popsicle sticks. I don't know, they're called something different, but I just call them popsicle sticks. And I'm using some of this Waverly chalk paint, I think in the color plaster. I've watered it down because we're gonna wash these with several different colors of paint because I'm going to make quite a bit of these, but I'm showing a few of these on camera. Because what I'm gonna use them as is just to tie on gifts for that something little extra, and then people can take them off and use them as um, hangers for their, you know, ornaments for their tree, or maybe re-gift them onto a gift. Now I'm using the Waverly Wax, and I've watered it down, and I'm using it again as a stain or a wash. And I'm also gonna use some black paint to give a stain or a wash. We end up with like, I think four different colors maybe. So again, you can do these however you want. I just wanted the wood grain to show through, but you can paint them bright colors. If your Christmas is bright colors, reds, greens, you know, whatever you want, you can paint them or you can wash them with color. Have a red wash, a green wash. Now that I've got them all stained, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the ends off because we're gonna make two of these wood ornaments per stick. Once I cut that first off, then I just used it to cut the rest of my ends off as a measuring guide. If you need to measure, go ahead and do that. Don't hesitate. I just eyeball things most of the time. I am going to go ahead and get my ruler to find my center for each one of these. Mark it and then cut these in two again to make those two, make two ornaments per stick. Once we get these all cut, we'll go ahead and sand those ends where we cut just to give them more of a smooth rounded edge. To put my holes in here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my crocodile. It does punch through um, thin pieces of wood. You can use lots of things to make holes if you don't have one of these. You can use a nail, get a piece of wood, lay this wood on it, nail it through, and then pull your nail back out. Um, there's definitely different ways. You can use a drill, you can use a dremel. My inspiration for these was some ornaments from Walmart that were almost identical in the shape, color, and with these cute little painted trees. Now they weren't super expensive, but I wanted to make a large amount myself to use on gifts, so that's why I decided to go ahead and make these. I'm just using some white chalk paint. You can use any kind of paint for this. Uh, I also end up using some black paint to do this as well. Have fun with it, paint little trees, put splatters and little dots to make it look like snow. Now we're just gonna go ahead and add some simple Dollar Tree twine to these as the hanger. And I do decide to embellish some of these and you'll see that coming up.
You all have to let me know if you like these and if you think you might make some. This next project is a super easy one as well, and we're also going to personalize it, but you don't have to. Now, these are just some thin wood rounds that you can get from the Dollar Tree or from Walmart or most craft stores. It already had the hole in it, so I didn't have to punch a hole in it. Now, I'm just using some stamps with trees on them and that gray paint to go ahead and stamp on this to give a background. We're doing mostly a background. I am filling the trees in some because I felt like they needed to be... Uh, more prominent as far as the shape but once I get the shape completed I will tone those back again so this can be more of a background using that white chalk paint just lightly brushing over them now that I have my background kind of the way I want it I'm gonna go ahead and use another one of those stamps you can use any kind of stamps you can use stencils the Dollar Tree sells stencils if you want reasonable stencils and they do have the whole alphabet letter set and they also have stickers with letters. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit darker paint so that that stands out over the trees. Once I get that done, I am going to fill that in a little bit because it didn't stamp complete the way that I wanted it. Then I'm going to seal this in and use some of that glitter around the edges as well. Now don't forget you can use green trees you can use red letters in the foreground do whatever goes with your style i was just making some neutral tags as gifts let me know what you guys think about this one our next project is going to be this cute little rustic chair i think this is handmade i just thought it would make an adorable christmas chair to sit around as decor this one is also going to have some neutral vibes to it the first thing i wanted to do was to whitewash this wood a little bit so I'm just going to take some of this Waverly Wax and go over the whole chair and then wipe that back. Then I'm going to make what looks like a forest scene in this chair. So I'm going to be using some of the Dollar Tree Christmas trees that comes three to a pack, a little porcelain bird that I got from Hobby Lobby, and some smaller trees and some pine cones. Now that I've kind of played around with these and kind of saw where I might want to glue my stuff down, I'm going to go ahead and just start hot gluing this to the wood. This is going to work fine as a glue because this is going to be inside and not moved, so the hot glue is going to hold it plenty. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this one, and I may have enough footage from last year to do another little compilation video. We'll see. But again, I'm going to be doing New Christmas, and I can't wait. I will see you in the next video.